So what do you want to talk about, Rarity? Let's talk about reading. Reading? Yes. Do so, people read? Uh, yeah, it's interesting. People say they don't read. Every time I talk to someone and say, I work with publishing, they say, oh, that's interesting. And they're always fascinated by it because they probably don't know many people in publishing. <laughs> yeah. But they also generally say, yeah, I just, I just can't get into reading or um, I don't read or yeah, I used to read, but yeah. I just find it very hard. Um, I think most people attribute it to their phones and shortened attention spans. Yeah. Would you say, were you ever a reader in your life? No. Yeah. Either was I. Mm -mm. So when I got out of college, I thought, what would be a good avenue for me to go as a non-reader? So I thought, publishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't ever, I think just reading happened when I started coming to Old North. Like, just reading was a part of the culture there, so... Interesting. So really late in life reader. Yeah. No, I hated reading in college. Didn't really do much of it. I studied art. <laughs> and then other than reading the Bible, like I don't, I don't think I did that consistently either yeah. as a college student. I always, say, I always say that I'm actually positioned pretty well to do what I do with publishing because um, I'm not naturally a reader. And mm -hmm. yet I still think it's close to invaluable to be to try to read mm -hmm. and maybe just back it up to say even more foundation on the reading is learning to be a learner yeah um you know one of the things we say when we talk about in vine growers workshops is that a disciple is a learner now it's not just learning for head knowledge but it's kind of transformative learning and so yeah maybe today we would say people have the opportunity to learn through podcasts or audiobooks uh but i'd still say that there's something unique about reading that helps me process information and learn in a in a way that none of those other other avenues do. Well, isn't that why it's a written word too? The Bible yeah. like <laughs> yeah causes us to learn. Yeah, we have to read it. No, we have to be careful because we know the original <laughs> the original readers of the New Testament Learners. weren't readers. So that's true. That's yeah. true. But they relied on people reading a scroll or reading out loud. And yet we also know from Paul in early church history that there were parchments, there were, as we would call today, books passed all around. Mm. And so while, yeah, reading was very much the literary rates, literacy rates were very much small compared to today, there's still a sense it is the written word. Mm. And this is how God has passed down the, his truth throughout the generations is through the written word. Mm. And so as such, um, or even think about from the Old Testament, it was interesting that the prohibition from the law and the Pentateuch was not, God was not to be seen or even imaged as in the mm. Ten Commandments. Do not make a graven image. He's supposed to be heard and listened to. But that was actually passed down through the written word of the Pentateuch. Yeah. And, and so there is something valuable we learn um, from how that was set up in the Old Testament, that God transmits, to use a very mechanical word, his truth through words. Mm -hmm. And so the way we process words in our current culture is very much important in terms of we are to be readers. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and just to say something that I think we all know, um, we are a very literary-based literary society. I mean, mm -hmm. think about how much you actually read. If you need to get information to Scott, your husband, mm -hmm. you text him yeah. and he reads it and he often responds or not. Um, <laughs> depends but, on the day. Yeah, it depends on the day and what's going on. And so I would, I try to help without being one of those kind of pedantic <laughs> Pharisee. I help, try to help people say, no, actually you do read a lot. It's yeah. a question of the extent you read, the purpose with you read and your habits of reading. Yeah, like your attention span. Yeah. Or, yeah, what you're choosing. I don't think I'd be the Christian I am today without no. reading the books that I've read. No, our brother Tony Payne, in one of his um, episodes or newsletters m many months ago, kind of, I can't remember, it's a catchy, it's a catchy title, of course, but it was something like that, um, that his Christian growth is built on a stack of books. Yeah, yeah. And the va this thinking about how important it is that I receive Christian teaching through sitting at my the church i was at any church i've been attending in the present moment in my life listening to the sermons going to bible studies but also very much so reading books trying to push through books i'm not a fast reader uh i have to reread sentences paragraphs even pages uh, mm -hmm. my comprehension is not great 
but I have just grown. I think about the things in life that have, looking back, that have given me significant moves forward in maturity and thinking have become through books. Yeah. I think about Guidance in the Voice of God that Tony mm -hmm. and Philip Jensen wrote. I think about Gospel and Kingdom by Graham Goldsworthy or God's Big Picture by Vaughn Roberts. Mm. Um, and I could go on with a list of 15, 20 books that are just. Yeah, I forget. I don't know who said it. It's a famous quote. It's about like books don't change people's lives, but paragraphs do. Mm. Like I feel like that's. Yeah. You can take that's... you finish books in a certain period, but like one thing sticks out to you. Or if you flip through it and you read it years back and you find something you highlighted. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Like things that make sense at the time or things that change your life yeah. or I don't know. Yeah. I, I like that. Quote. I don't know who said it. Yeah. I should know, but no, that's okay. You should attribute it to yourself. That'd be good. <laughs> it wasn't me. As a famous Lindsay once said, <laughs> um, but it's interesting that, <laughs> that we were talking about these things and we know that as Christians, we well, first and foremost, we're Bible readers. Mm. And I've heard people say fair enough, fairly enough that, you know, we, we should not let our Christian reading distract us from Bible reading. Absolutely right. But I often don't see those two in, in contradiction to each other. Mm -hmm. I often find that the more I'm reading in life, the more I'm Bible reading. And the more I'm Bible reading or the better I'm Bible reading, the more it spurs me on to do other reading. Yeah. So, of course, in one sense, we have you know 24 hours a day, limited mm -hmm. amount of time. So every minute I spend doing one thing, obviously the opportunity cost is at expense of something else. But there is a, I, I yeah, concede that, but I also think generally I encourage people if they just struggle to get any reading to just try to, similar to working out yeah. or any kind of habit, is just pick something you're interested in mm -hmm. as it relates to Christian topics, ideas, find a book or get a friend to recommend a book and just read one chapter. Yeah. <laughs> and What's then, that practice? Like it's like 20 minutes? Yeah. Well, John, John Piper would say... So John Piper, most people know, is a very, I mean, both a pastor, preacher, but in a scholar. I mean, he, he got his start in scholarship, academia, mm -hmm. getting his PhD. But he said his most of his adult life, he spent reading his habits were, it sounds so simple, but he picked three pockets of 15 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. And that's how he, div he kind of held, made and held his practice of reading. Mm -hmm. And you say that, like, can three pockets of 15 minutes today, Lindsay, you can find. Now, it's, I've tried it. It's very hard. So I'm just currently trying for one pocket for right. 15 minutes. And even that's hard. Yeah. But how much I'm sure I'm spending 15 minutes on my phone three, easily. three times or, a day. Or yes. Yes. So I think there is something about that. The fact that we say that we are people of the word, mm -hmm. that God transmit his truth to us by, by the spirit, but through the word. Um, and that we have access to so much yeah. um, to help us with the word. But we should never let go of the, the process of actually putting our eyes over and reading the truth yeah. uh, in the word. So there is that. But the other thing um, I've, I've been running into people and in talking about this, because it just as I said, it comes up when I tell them what I do for a living. Uh, I, people want to tell me how much they know their smartphone, their phone has caused a degradation in their, think, in their abilities. Really, all abilities to think, you know, we, I can't even remember a phone number anymore because yeah. I have a, it's on my phone. So, one of the great thing about actually a book, a physical book, is that if I'm reading a physical book, sure, I can put it down and go get distracted with something else. But there is something that it's really nice that I can set my phone down or in the other room or across the room and I can say, I'm going to just try to read one chapter of a book. Mm. It might be eight minutes, it might be 20 minutes, but in the big picture, that's not a big deal. Mm. And it's it's a good habit for me to detach from my phone, which I, I know everyone wants to do. Right. I haven't met a person who had who said, no, I want to be more attached to my <laughs> phone. Right. So or it seems like there's people that, I do this a lot, like that you're watching TV, but you have to have your phone and you have to scroll. Like you have to do both two things. Two things. Like yeah. to distract you and from this, both things. That's a good point. And I'm, I noticed myself the other day, because I got on my kids. Like, yeah. can't you just watch what you want to watch and not scroll? Yeah. As I sit there and scroll. <laughs> it, um, but yeah, that's, that's it. And so, but if I have a book, I'm holding a book, both hands, yeah. or a pen in one hand and I'm <clears> underlining, <throat> I am fully engaged. So it's... We know it's the value of learning, growing, and our understanding of Christianity by a book, but also really doing good exercise for our mind. Yeah. We're practicing focus. 
discipline and detachment from our devices. Yeah. And it's a good example for your family. Like, yeah, to know that you can set aside and you're not addicted to a certain thing, like to be able to set aside and, and prioritize reading. Yeah. And I think it's daunting because people like they get a book, even a 200 page book now seems long yeah. for people. But simply just saying, just read a chapter. Yeah. And then if you can do it the next day, great. Mm -hmm. But um, breaking down a book into chapter at a time is really helpful. So I re generally recommend people try it and pick a book that has chapters that take 15 minutes or less to read and then see what happens. Yeah. Well, what about if you're reading multiple books? Like um, you read a lot of different things all at the same time. Like I struggle with, oh, I'm really hyped about this book. And then I need to start reading another one because I'm assigned to it. So now I, I'm, I'm in two bit different books. Like, should I just yeah. finish the one that I, I started? I think everybody's different. I mean, <laughs> I go in seasons, actually. Like, yeah. part of it is because what I do for a living, uh, I have to read multiple things at the same time. But part of it is just how I'm wired. So mm -hmm. everybody's different. It's one of these things that, like, the, great, the greatest good in this is to try to get yourself reading to consume good Christian content. Um, and how you go about it in one sense, is very secondary. Mm. Um, and so th you know, whether, whether that's I'm only going to do one book at a time or to, because, you know, I'm going to be creative, I'm going to do a, a book. I have a friend who reads only one book each different day. Like, so Monday he reads oh, this okay. book, Tuesday he reads that book. And I can't do that. I could not do that. Um, but however you get there, I think it's the idea is, yeah, just, just start getting through. John Chapman, a well-known Australian, he said that about Bible reading. He did. He tried to say, let's let's lose all the other kind of stuff that's good, but kind of sometimes get in the way and just he'd say, move the bookmark to the right. Hmm. I just like that idea. That's how you do good Bible reading. Just just move the bookmark. Just, right. just move the bookmark to the right. So, yes, the through the Bible in a year plan requires you to read about four chapters a day. Hmm. And so you yeah, you think great. And then, you know, February comes and. So just move Burned the bookmark. Yeah. Well, I think it's very similar to reading a book. Yes, ideally you get through a book a week or whatever. Oh, just move the book. Just move the bookmark. Yeah. So there, there is yeah. There's the learning. There's the the just the mental exercise and um, aspect of it. And it's also, as I mentioned already, it's the detachment from everything else. Mm -hmm. um, it's really good. You can take if you just do the the one third of the John Piper approach. Mm -hmm. One 15 minute pocket a day of mm -hmm. reading then you have forced yourself to do a lot of things at once in 15 short minutes. Mm -hmm. I know this sounds like a uh, very self-serving coming from a publisher, but you know, we, we've had this discussion many times. I talk about this all the time. Um, I tell people find cri good Christian books. And actually, if you just have them sitting around, the more they'll beckon you. Mm -hmm. Even yeah, you know, for those people who are very money sensitive or cheap like me, you're like, man, I bought that book. Should at least try to read, read it. it. <laughs> yeah. For others, just having a stack of books with different things listed on the cover, different topics, it's going to, I hope, beckon you to like, yeah, yeah, I could go scroll social media or I could actually try to get through a half a chapter mm -hmm. of a book about the Trinity yeah. or um, killing sin or whatever the many, many other topics. Mm. Yeah. Good stuff. I know. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, Marty. 